Docker recently announced the Wasm integration and published a technical preview. Ever since, everyone has been wondering what this means and why there are blogs out there stating that Wasm will replace Docker and Kubernetes and so on. And Solomon Hikes, the founder of Docker, tweeted that if Wasm and Wasi existed in 2008, they wouldn't have had to build Docker. Since then, we've been receiving a lot of questions about what Wasm is, what does it have to do with Docker, the difference between Docker and Wasm, and how does the integration work, and whether Wasm will actually replace Docker, Kubernetes, or both. My name is Mumshal Manambeth, and in this video, I'm going to try and answer these questions for you. But before I begin, hit that subscribe button if you'd like to be notified when we release new videos every week. So let's begin. So what is Wasm? So first, it is important to understand exactly what Wasm is all on its own. So I'll try to explain it in the simplest of simplest terms. You've all seen Photoshop, right? I mean, I remember when I first used Photoshop about a decade ago, I had to download this gigabyte-sized application, then go through this hour-long installation process to finally be able to work with it. Today, what if you could just access Photoshop by going to photoshop.adobe.com, right? How is this complex application like Photoshop served through the web and run in a browser? Have you ever wondered how tools like Figma that let you create advanced wireframes can be run right in your browser without requiring any installation or configuration? Have you ever seen high-end video games being played in a web browser and wondered how that's possible? The web applications that we know today are typically built in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The structure is built using HTML. These are designed beautifully using CSS and then made highly interactive by using JavaScript frameworks like React, Vue.js, Next.js, and whatnot. Now, we can use these to create beautiful web pages and games. However, they have their limitations. You can't use JavaScript alone to create tools like Figma or programs like Photoshop or games, as I showed before. These are developed in programming languages like C or C++ or Rust and are usually run as an executable desktop application. So how do you port these complex applications to work online within browsers? And that's where WebAssembly comes in. You see, traditionally, programming languages written in a text or code format cannot be understood by computers. So we need to convert a given source code written in a programming language to machine understandable code. We call this a compilation process and refer to the transformed code format as a compilation target. So WebAssembly is a new type of compilation target for languages like C, C++, or Rust, and is used to run native apps inside browsers. It is possible to compile the native language code to what is known as the Wasm binary with an online Wasm assembler like Wasm Explorer or Wasm Fiddle or a tool such as mscripten. Ultimately, the generated web uh, Wasm binary can be loaded and run inside the browser along with the JavaScript code. The WebAssembly code can be loaded into a web app using JavaScript, uh, WebAssembly APIs, and interact with each other as needed. So now let's see a simple demo to see uh, this in action. So first, we're going to see how to compile a simple C program and run it locally, and then we will compile the same into a Wasm binary and run it inside a web page. So here's a code for a simple uh, Hello World program written in C that prints uh, the Hello World to the screen, right? Super simple. We then use the GCC um, compiler to compile it into a binary. We can now see the hello world.exe file here. And then when you run this file, you see the text hello world printed on screen. Super simple and straight. Now we will compile the same program into a Wasm binary and run it inside a browser. So earlier we used GCC to compile this into an executable. And now we will use the mscripten tool to compile this to Wasm binary. So following the documentation from the mscripten website, we use the emcc command to compile the hello world.c file and generate a wasm binary. A very helpful additional option is the dash o option of the emcc command that generates a HTML file with the supporting JavaScript code required to load the wasm binary as well. Isn't that really cool? Now, we see the hello world HTML file, a hello world JavaScript file, and a hello world wasm binary file all automatically generated by the emcc command. Now, if you look closely into the JavaScript file, you'll see that the Wasm binary is being loaded as a file into the page. And now when we view the HTML file, we see that the C code has been executed and prints the expected output on the page. So we have successfully compiled and, uh, the same C code into a Wasm binary and loaded it within a web page. 
Okay, so we now understand how Wasm helps run complex applications in a browser. But is that all Wasm can do? If WebAssembly does a great job at packaging applications and enabling them to run in a browser, why limit it to just browsers instead of using it to package and run applications anywhere, even outside the web? Now, when you compile an application program written in a language like Go or Rust or C++ into a WebAssembly format, you end up with a binary that can be executed on any Wasm runtime. Some of the Wasm runtimes are uh, Wagi, uh, WebAssembly Micro Runtime, Wasm Time, Wasm Edge, etc. Now, WebAssembly runtimes are similar to JVM or V8 Engine or even Ruby or Python runtimes that you must be familiar with already. They help run applications written in those specific languages. Now, the WebAssembly binary, however, is platform neutral, which means you don't need to worry about the underlying operating system or the processor architecture. So the application can run on all major operating systems. However, the application might need access to system resources such as files and directories, environment variables, or system time. These are bound to the Wasm module during startup by what's known as the WebAssembly system interface. So you have the operating system, and then you have the WebAssembly system interface, which helps the Wasm runtime uh, that sits on top of it to access the system resources. And then we have the uh, WebAssembly binaries that run on top of the Wasm runtime. Now, furthermore, there's no need to worry about running on an Intel or ARM processor as the WebAssembly module runs inside the Wasm runtime and executes the Wasm binary according to the current host operating system and processor. So Wasm is the packaged form of the application and its dependencies in a format which can be run on a browser. And WASC is the system interface that makes it possible for Wasm binaries to run outside of the browsers and on operating systems. So let's see this in action quickly. Now, earlier we compiled the C code into a Wasm binary that can be executed in a browser. And now we will compile it into a JavaScript file suitable to be executable in a Node.js environment. Now, the program is the same, and the command to compile is the same. We use the emcc command and specify the source code followed by the dash o option. But this time we specify the JS file as the output. The command now generates a Wasm binary and also a JavaScript file that can now be run using Node.js. So that's a simple demo that shows a C program uh, can be compiled into a Wasm binary and run in Node.js. So WebAssembly enables applications to be packaged into Wasm modules, and along with WASC, allows these applications to run anywhere on any operating system and not just in browsers. Now, that concept might ring a bell if you are familiar with containers and Docker, because containers kind of work the same way. So let's take a look at that next. If you're not yet familiar with Docker, let's go over it really quickly. Now, if you remember how we executed our C program in our local machine in the earlier demo, you'll know it involved several steps. So number one, you download and install a C, C++ compiler compatible with your operating system, and then you install the necessary libraries and dependencies to work with the GCC compiler. And then you configure the path variable to use the GCC command from anywhere in your file system. And then you compile the source program with the correct GCC command. And then you run the generated executable. Now, let's say you have run this Hello World program on your Windows machine. You then have to be careful to download and uh, install the C or C++ compiler dependencies and libraries that are Windows OS compatible. You also have to add the GCC command to the Windows path variable and so on. Now, what happens if, uh, let's say, your teammate wants to run and check your fancy Hello World program on their uh, Mac system, maybe? You can then share the C source file with your colleague, uh, but they must handle the compiling and running your program on their local machines from the very beginning. They need to download and install the compatible C compiler, the libraries, and dependencies for their Linux or Mac OS. Not only that, if you have used a library within your C program that is incompatible with your colleague's OS version, a whole additional nightmare awaits. This is where you begin saying, well, it works on my machine um, to everyone on your team and has historically been one of the biggest headaches in developing, building, and shipping software. So what if you could package your awesome program into one single package along with all the necessary dependencies and libraries and so on in a container that can be up and run by anyone. You could provide this container to your colleague who would up it and be able to run your program along with all the necessary libraries and dependencies 
perfectly regardless of your colleague's underlying hardware infrastructure or operating system. And that's exactly what Docker does. Docker is capable of running one or more containers inside a virtual machine on top of its OS and hardware infrastructure. Each container can talk to the others as well as the underlying OS and services, but runs in a totally isolated environment. Practically speaking, a Docker container is based on a Docker image, which is a set of snapshots of a file system layered together to form a single environment. If you look back at our example, you'll see we can create a Docker image starting from a base image, then add the supporting programs and files and utilities, um, compilers, uh, C, C++, and so on, and libraries and that our Hello World C program needs. And finally, the C program uh, should be added and bundled as a single Docker image that can be used to run a Docker container. Let's have a quick look at how to create and run a Docker container that can run your Hello World C program. So here we are with our simple C program. Our goal is to containerize it. So we build a Docker image for it. For that, we create a Docker file. The Docker file looks like this. It is built from the GCC image. It is an image that has the C compiler in it. In the next few lines, we copy the code from the local directory into the image using Docker's copy instruction. And then we build it using the GCC command with Docker's run instruction. And then we specify the command to be run when this uh, container is executed using the CMD instruction. We then run the Docker build command to build the image and then the Docker run command to run the application. Well, pretty simple and straightforward. Note that there are better ways to do this and some best practices to be followed to separate the build process and the executable version, but we're going to keep it super simple uh, just for the sake of brevity. Okay, so let's compare Docker and Wasm now. As you probably saw already, Docker and Wasm do a lot of things the same way. Both can package applications and enable them to be run anywhere. Docker's architecture diagram has first the underlying infrastructure, then comes the host operating system, and then the Docker engine. And then we have containers that have the application's libraries, and dependencies, and binaries. Now, if you look at the Wasm architecture diagram, you will see the infrastructure, then the host operating system, and then the WASC, which is the WebAssembly system interface, and that's responsible for providing access to system resources for the Wasm runtime. And then you have the Wasm runtime on which the Wasm modules run. Now, if you take a closer look at these two, you'll notice some distinct differences. Well, Docker wraps the program and its dependencies into uh, a single package that we call as an image and then runs it as a container. A Docker container consists of a full file system, utility programs, binaries, and libraries, which appear to be a complete operating system for the application itself. In addition, it is key to create your Docker image according to the right system architecture, like Intel, ARM, AMD, um, and so on. For example, if you have a Raspberry Pi OS running Docker, then you should create a Docker image for your C program based on your Linux image and compile it for ARM processor architecture. Otherwise, your container will not uh, run properly. On the other hand, WebAssembly modules and binaries are pre-compiled C, C++, Rust, or Go applications. These Wasm binaries can be easily executed on a WebAssembly runtime, such as Wasm Time, Wasm Edge, or Wagi, as we talked about earlier. It does not rely at all on the host operating system or processor architecture, because a Wasm binary does not contain any prepackaged file system or low-level operating system primitives. Every directory or environment variable or clock utility and system resource is attached to the Wasm module during the runtime facilitated by the WebAssembly system interface, or WASI. So the Wasm modules are not coupled with the host OS or processor architecture. This is a major difference between how Docker and Wasm works. Now, from a performance standpoint, there are some significant advantages for Wasm when compared to Docker. Wasm binaries start up in milliseconds compared to several seconds for Docker containers. As such, Wasm programs are almost native speed when it comes to performance. The size of a Wasm module is just several MBs as it does not have any OS components, but a container image may be tens or hundreds of MBs at times if there are too many operating system dependent packages. Since Wasm was built for browser, it also runs in a browser, of course. But um, and one of the key differences is that Wasm runs cross-platform, whereas Docker has a limitation on specific CPU architectures or operating systems. Windows containers don't natively run on Linux and vice versa. As we have just discussed, Wasm is a powerful way to compile and run your existing native code written in C, C++, Rust, or Go inside the browser. 
as well as outside of browsers or on top of any WASM runtime, while confidently enjoying near-native performance, high security, and quicker startup times. Docker enables you to package your application code along with all of its de necessary dependencies and uh, ship it as one convenient single image with high portability and runtime isolation features. And over the past decade, we have invested in learning about containers and Docker and also building infrastructure to support Docker containers, such as Swarm and, and Kubernetes clusters. So do we unlearn all of that and relearn Wasm now? Do we have to ditch all of the infrastructure and rebuild new infrastructure for Wasm? Not necessarily. What if we took Wasm's high performance, high security, and quicker startup aspects and combined it with Docker's high portability features. This is where the Docker plus Wasm integration become more valuable than anyone could have ever dreamed. With Docker's Wasm support, you can run Wasm containers parallel to Linux and Windows containers, which enables you to run your native application code inside a Wasm container and share it as a Docker image. Since Docker makes it easy to build, share, and reuse your application code, and developers are familiar with Docker workflows, it is easier to use Wasm's high performance and security aspects to build and power up your native applications inside a container environment with quicker startup times. So how does it work? Currently, you have Docker Engine, which is the Docker API server that serves all your requests. When you run a Docker run command, a container process is created by a container runtime called run C. So run C is responsible for creating and starting container processes. Run C exits after the container is created. So you need some kind of manager to monitor the container, and that's the container D shim. Now, one container D shim process is created for each container, and it is the container D shim process that initiates the creation of container by uh, the run C and also monitors and manages the container process. And it captures its logs and redirects them and helps you attach to the container when you run the docker attach command. There is a higher level manager that manages all the containers, and that is the container D process. Now, to run Wasm containers with Docker, we use the Wasm Edge runtime. This is one of the supported WebAssembly runtimes that were mentioned before. And to integrate the Wasm Edge runtime with Docker, the folks at Docker worked with the folks at Wasm Edge to create a new container D shim called container D Wasm shim. So in the next demo, we'll better understand the power of Docker and Wasm integration. And note that Docker plus Wasm integration is only supported as a beta feature on a special technical preview build of Docker desktop app as of this recording. Also refer to this article published by Docker on while testing it out by yourselves. So as before, we first compile the C program into a Wasm binary. For this, we run the emcc command and pass in the path to the source code of the Hello World program and the output of a Wasm file. Then we build a Docker image from it. The Docker file looks like this. It's built from scratch. Uh, from scratch means there is no base OS image. There's nothing really, uh, really there. Then we copy the hello world.wasm binary into the image. And the entry, entry point is the binary S as well. And here's the interesting part. When we build the Docker image, now we provide a platform flag to specify that this is a container for Wasm. Uh, the image has now been built successfully, and next we run this using the docker run command, and we specify the runtime as io.containerd.wasmedge.v1, and the platform as wasc slash wasm32, and followed by the image name that we just built. We have now successfully built an image with the wasm binary and run the wasm container. So what's the future looking like? The integration of WebAssembly and WebAssembly system interface has the potential to change the way applications are developed and run. In the future, the integration of Wasm and WASI is likely to become more prevalent as more developers adopt these technologies. WASI and Wasm can be used in conjunction with containerization and orchestration technologies such as Docker and Kubernetes, allowing for more efficient deployment and scaling of web-based applications. Now, while it's possible that Wasm may be used as an alternative to some use cases currently handled by containerization, it's unlikely that it will replace these technologies entirely. Well, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed and um, got a brief idea of Wasm and how it works with Docker. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we release new videos every week. And don't forget to share this video uh, with your friends if you think this is going to be valuable. Well, thank you so much. And until next time, goodbye.